welcome and happy Tuesday. I am so excited to be here and I hope you are too. If you are joining this meeting, I know you are looking forward to taking NCLEX or thinking about next, next generation NCLEX and planning to come to US and work here as a nurse. Whatever your thought process is, I'm glad you're here. My name is Ansu. I am the director of NCLEX program at Avant and me and my team help you prepare for NCLEX examination. Now, if you are somebody who is as fascinated and as curious as me about NCLEX and next generation NCLEX, we're going to have a fun time, okay, in the next few minutes. I know that a lot of you get nervous when you think about next generation NCLEX and you are thinking, I better start studying now and get this NCLEX out of the way before the next generation comes, right? So I'm here to tell you that while a new process or change is nerve wracking, next generation NCLEX is not as crazy of a monster as you think. If you prepare well, you can tackle this just like you can tackle NCLEX right now and today. As an international experienced nurse, you do have exposure to a lot of clinical scenario, right? NCLEX examination is administered to new graduate nurses in the United States. However, as an experienced nurse, you have been exposed to a lot of clinical scenarios than a new, a new nurse have been exposed to. So you have that upper hand of that clinical expertise and critical thinking and clinical judgment, which is what Next Generation NCLEX is all about. Now you're thinking, and so it's talking all about the case study and the next generation NCLEX, but I don't know what that looks like. So I have a really simple sample of the case study that we're going to play with today. So Mr. Dawson is a 63 year old male with a history of congestive heart failure. Now, when you start reading this question, what should you be doing from that first sentence itself, you're thinking about what is congestive heart failure? What are some of the signs and symptoms I see in a patient with, patient with congestive heart failure, right? You should, you should already have that wheel turning. And now he's admitted to the intensive care unit. You know that he's not doing well, right? His condition is deteriorating. He is breathless, right? Shortness of breath, restless, of course, with poor oxygenation. Decreased oxygen saturation, clearly he is symptomatic. Assessment reveals wheezing in the lungs, pink frothy sputum. Pink frothy sputum is a classic sign of da da da. I will let you fill in the blanks. And pitting edema to upper and lower extremities. So now you got a picture of Mr. Dawson and he's sick in the ICU, having trouble breathing. Okay. We do have more information on Mr. Dawson. So in the real um, next generation NCLEX also, you will be given that case study in every page. So you don't have to scroll back and look at what were the symptoms again? Okay, so it will be readily available. Um, and there is no scrolling back anyways, right? In NCLEX, once you move forward, that is it, forget about the past. So we do have more information. He does have a low grade fever. His heart rate is elevated. Anything else that you see in the slide that, you know, kind of worries you? I'll, I'll give you a moment to look through the um, lab findings and vital signs to see is there anything that concerns you. And so we have someone commenting pulmonary congestion. Pulmonary congestion, that's a great point, right? We have all the symptoms of shortness of breath, decreased oxygen saturation, your respiratory rate is going up, great point. Anything else? Waiting to hear. We have lots of people saying hello. All right, another okay. comment. CO2 is high, acidosis. Very good, very good. You're all the Awesome, awesome. PCO2 is high. Mm -hmm. That is correct. CO2 is high. Our normal value is 35 to 45. So it's definitely elevated. So I hope you got a picture of Mr. Dawson, right? Along with your X-ray results. So, you know, pay attention to those little details. Okay. 
we are moving on to our first question. So that was just a picture of him in ICU with congestive heart failure. And, and some of you think there is pulmonary congestion. Some of you think he's acidotic. Some of you think there is elevated CO2. All that are great points. Now let's um, look at the first question. So question number one, highlight which findings require immediate follow-up by the nurse. So clearly this is a new style of question, right? So far you were not highlighting any answers. Well, here you go. The first type of uh, next generation NCLEX question, you gotta highlight. So you gotta tell me which one I have to highlight, okay? So I'll give you a moment to give your answers, but tell me which areas needs highlighting. All right, we've gotten more answers since earlier. So right okay. sided heart failure, bl blood pressure. I'm just getting you up to speed. Okay. Oxygen is low, PO2 is low, low oxygen saturation, and CCF. So that wow. is our main, our I so think we got it all right, but people forgot about that pink frothy sputum, right? Sign of pulmonary edema. So other than that, I heard everything correct. So let's see that respiratory rate right the heart rate and respiratory rate elevated so you're worried about it go ahead and highlight it you said the blood pressure is high the patient is in fluid overload highlight it ph he's acidotic somebody mentioned that earlier 